then you start looking at like government shutdown, and then you start looking at okay, here we're going to go through the debt ceiling again, and mm-hmm. all these crises that seem to. I mean, it's every two weeks, right? There's another yeah, crisis. Yeah. And you're of course in law. Mm-hmm. Do you see any wavering? Does it change the the mentality of your clients? Does it change your business at all, or is it? Are people like separating themselves from it? Yeah, I don't think. Uh, any of this major, you know, policy issue, you know, the major policy issues of, of debt ceilings and government shutdowns has really affected my clients that much. Um, mostly, it's stuff that's just already going on in their in their day to day lives with their estates and and uh, you know the death of a family member or you know too much debt and they need some relief, mm-hmm. you know that type of thing. But it's it's rarely because of any major political event that that anything really happens with somebody. So yeah, I mean it's it's kind of interesting because you talk about like uh, you know debt relief Mm -hmm. and here you have i don't know if you start following what may happen on the 17th Mm -hmm. now you have a debt ceiling issue can the government pay its debts right and now of course now you have this whole other well it's just the next crisis right in two weeks we're gonna have the next one so the news (laughs) can stay busy again right but you know a lot of people have that too where Mm -hmm. you know the the month runs out or i guess the money runs out before the month does yeah, exactly. And unfortunately for most individuals, unlike the government, we can't just raise the debt ceiling or print more money. Right. Like, like, like Call Visa. Can. Yeah, exactly. It, <laughs> it, you know, it works wonderful for the government, I suppose. But, but for most individuals, we just don't, we can't keep printing the money and we can't keep raising the debt ceiling. So when, the, you know, when your debts become so large and, and, and Does, unmanageable, you have to, to, to do something. Because uh, raising the debt ceiling is really like calling Visa and going, hey, I'm going to need a little bit more this exactly, month. And yes. Can you push me up another $1,000 right, or whatever right. it can may you, be? Yeah. Can you raise my credit limit just a little bit more because yeah. I've got to, you know, I've got to buy something. Right, do right. Something. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's almost identical in that in that sense. Uh, unfortunately, like for most people, it doesn't work that way. Sure. I mean, once you've maxed out your credit card, at least these days, I mean, I suppose years ago, before the you know before two thousand and eight, you max out a credit card and you just open the mail and there's another one and you right <laughs> you fill out the paperwork right. and you're pre-approved. There's another ten thousand dollars. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. But and that worked much well. Now. That worked well. Yes, yes. For the whole economy, <laughs> it did until you know until the end of two thousand eight and right. everything started coming down. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and it's kind of if you think about that, you know, Visa will extend your account when you have no balance. They're mm-hmm. happy to give you credit when you don't need it. Exactly. U.S. government doesn't work that way. They give you credit when they, well, they just vote it for themselves. Yeah, whenever they feel like it. But when you start looking at what you guys are dealing with with individuals, of course, Mm -hmm. it's it's not a parallel. It's certainly not equal. No, it's not equal because, you know, for, for real people, you, you have to eventually uh, deal with the situation. And, and if you have a lot of debt um, or if you have, if from, and from whatever reason, it could be because you've been unemployed um, and so you can't pay your bills, um, a lot of times a medical issue uh, will, will, will cause you to have a lot of unpaid uh, medical bills and everything. You've got uh, you know, deductibles and copays and that stuff adds up. And uh, at least for me personally, looking at my new medical insurance landscape, I could have lots of un- uncovered medical bills because I'm going to pay more to get less. Right. So, but, uh, so those things, they all add up and, and they can become overwhelming for people. Or, you know, you could get behind on your mortgage payments and whatnot and, and you're, you're facing a foreclosure or the repossession of a car. Uh, I get a lot of people who are being garnished. So, you know, they didn't make the, the visa payment. Uh, eventually it went to collection. Then turned over to an attorney, they got sued, they got a judgment, and now the, you know, the, the creditor is going after 25% of your take-home pay. So mm-hmm. they're, they're garnishing your wages. And most people uh, you know, spend what they have coming in for the most part. It just seems to work out that way. So now reduce your income by 25% and still try to make it. And a lot of people find they can't do that. Sure. And so then you need some form of relief. And oftentimes, unfortunately, a bankruptcy is is the way to go to to do that. So talk about you know when as people obviously deal with different types of issues, there's there's different types of bankruptcy. Right, right. Uh, there's about generally five types of bankruptcy. Only two generally apply to individuals. Um, so Chapter Seven is is the one that I think most people will use. It's it's a what's called a straight bankruptcy where you're going to try to wipe out pretty much all of your 
debts if possible. Uh, you can't wipe out all debts, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but for the most part, you can wipe out most of the problem debt in the bank in a Chapter 7 bankruptcy if you qualify. Um, a Chapter 9 doesn't apply to individuals. That's for for, uh, for governments. That's for cities and municipalities. Chapter 11, most people hear about Chapter 11, but that's almost exclusively for corporations and large companies and whatnot. Uh, and then there's a Chapter 12, which is for a family farmer, uh, which in the Seattle area, we don't have too many of those. Uh, and then in Chapter 13, which also applies to individuals, but that's a repayment plan. So if for some reason you don't qualify for a Chapter 7, because there are certain qualifications you have to have to, to be able to take advantage of that uh, you know, bankruptcy relief, if you don't qualify, a lot of times you can use a Chapter 13 and make a repayment plan for a period of time. And then you know, if you can't pay everything off, at the end of the line, uh, you get you know the rest, the balance gets wiped out, just like in the Chapter Seven. So the Chapter Seven gives you the fastest relief and, and generally the most relief, and then the Chapter Thirteen is is also a very common way for for individuals who don't qualify uh, for the Seven to uh, to deal with their debts. Um, the Chapter Thirteen also can help individuals if you need to. If you want to try to keep your house, for instance, if you're behind on your mortgage payments, you can make a plan that allows you to get caught up on your mortgage payments if you've got the extra income every month to be able to, to deal with that. So so the, the Chapter 13 can also allow you to save certain property as well. And certainly a lot of people have, have run into those those issues in the, last, in the last several years. Certainly. So when you start looking at helping somebody determine, I guess, not only what chapter they are, what they qualify for, mm -hmm. because it's, I mean, it's a process, right? You don't just yep. go, woohoo, I'm out. I mean, you have to uh, qualify for these things. Right, exactly. Um, there's there's a couple things to look at. I mean, with regard to any bankruptcy, the, especially a Chapter 7, um, the first thing everybody wants to know, and, and a lot of people uh, often assume incorrectly, uh, they come to me and say, well, won't I lose all of my assets? If I file Chapter 7, I mean, isn't that the one where I lose everything? And the answer is generally no. You, you're not going to lose everything. The law allows you to keep um, a large, a fairly significant amount of assets, and including a significant amount of equity in a home, equity in a car, uh, you know, personal possessions, cash, and things like that. And then this is one where a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, they come to me at the wrong time. Uh, after they have depleted their 401k or depleted their IRA, so their, their, their retirement funds, uh, then they come to me and say, well, I still can't make it. I used all that money to pay these bills over the years, and I'm still deep in debt, so I still need to file a bankruptcy. We'll help them. But unfortunately, if they'd come to me in the, on the front end, we could have avoided depleting those funds because 401ks and IRAs are almost entirely protected. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can have retirement funds uh, and, and, and go through the bankruptcy and come out on the other end and keep you know, most, of, most of your retirement money, unless it's, a, it's a, an incredibly huge amount of money. Uh, where it's dramatically unfair to, you know, to, to get out from under your, your debt. Sure. Uh, but I mean, that's a huge part of this because a lot of people, you know, I guess everybody, I suppose at some point in time, most people mm -hmm. feel some level of financial stress. Yes. Now, whether you're going down the financial stress of like, you know, waiting for your next paycheck mm -hmm. versus we really can't make ends meet, mm -hmm. getting ahead of the game and talking to somebody early, like we talk about in so many different things, mm -hmm. whether it's getting a mortgage or buying a house or, as you say, going through bankruptcy, getting on the conversation started early right. is right. a really big part of this, isn't it? It is a big part of it. And and, and especially with, uh, well, with a lot of the people that I deal with, I mean, I deal with a lot of estate plans as well, and, and people don't really want to deal with that issue either. Uh, bankruptcy is, is similar in that uh, you know, it, ha it still has a stigma. It, the stigma isn't what it used to be. You know, nobody, oh, you don't want to ever file bankruptcy. You'll be branded for life type thing. That doesn't exist anymore, but a lot of people still feel bad about filing right. bankruptcy, and that's a a good thing. I'm not saying that that's not a good thing. I think that's the way it should be. It was really easy in like 2008 when it was like, oh, well, GM did it and exactly. Lehman Brothers did it. And <laughs> right, right. But yeah, people still uh, want to avoid it. And so they, 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 they do anything they can to, to put that day of reckoning off. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes that leads them to make the, uh, a not so good decision with regard to, particularly with retirement funds or something like that. I had a, a a uh, guy come to me uh, where uh, about two years ago, before you know the values of, of, of property started increasing again, he probably could have done a bankruptcy then, but 
he didn't. Now he probably has too much equity in his house to be able to, you know, qualify for the bankruptcy and still keep the house because you can, you know, I mean, you only have so much you can protect. It's not an unlimited amount of money that you can protect in terms of equity in mm-hmm. your house. And he didn't, he didn't necessarily move fast enough. So uh, it's one of those things where sooner is better. And, and talking to somebody, uh, whether it's uh, a financial advisor or an attorney, uh, sooner rather than later is, is probably the better move. Yeah, and it seems like um, you know it's one of those kind of – a lot of people are afraid before they come in to see what they're going to get pre-qualified for for a house. Mm-hmm. They're afraid of what their credit score may be. It's probably that same stigma as you mm-hmm. say where people are a little bit of afraid – like right. oh well, what's this gonna what's gonna happen and yep. but the conversation isn't necessarily the end all be all you're just starting the conversation that you right. can also end at any point in time exactly that's that's true and you know there are plenty of people who come to me they sit down and they they find out the basics of of the bankruptcy and how it would work and and then want to wait and see and then you know six months later things are better they they've been able to deal with some of their debts and they don't need the bankruptcy so yeah it's a, it's a conversation you can have and find out the information and then you don't necessarily have to follow through of, uh, of course but but if you're in a situation where things aren't getting any better or if you're getting worse um, for instance if you're all of a sudden being sued or garnished or or whatever or facing a foreclosure uh, then yeah you're going to probably need to take action and and actually file uh, a bankruptcy and and deal with those issues <laughs> Thank you.